Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to our Crochet Podcast, episode 22. Welcome back to our returning viewers. Hi, how are you? And if you're just popping by for the first time, welcome. I'm glad you joined us. Let me cover up those birds. Usually they let me uh, talk longer before they start participating. <sighs> okay, that's better. Uh, today, I don't really have finished objects. It has been Easter, so I was with the kids, had a great time, was so exhausted. It was exhausted. <laughs> Color, I have four kids. Okay, let me get back to the beginning. Welcome new viewers who are just popping in and welcome back to my returning viewers and friends. Hi. Um, thanks for spending this time with me. Get a cup of tea, cup, cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever time of day it is in your part of the world. Um, I made notes, messy notes though, didn't leave enough space in my book. <laughs> and. I don't really have any finished objects. I am wearing this, but obviously you know that's a finished object because there's a tutorial on it already. I'll just show it behind in case uh, you haven't seen it. This is the Stripey V Poncho. Mm. I think there's a two-part tutorial on it. But basically, it is alternating rows of double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, with single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch into the spaces. And you get this really cool, let me see if I can show you, this really cool kind of pattern. So I like it, it's cozy, and it doesn't fall off. So that is a winner. I'll link it in the description box below if you're interested. I think it's like about... Five balls of yarn for the main color and one ball of your accent colors. You don't even use all the ball because you're just doing single crochet with those ones. So anyway, back to my notes. <sighs> I'm a bit scatterbrained, I apologize. My kids are home from school. Oh yes, yeah, so Easter, it was Easter weekend. So I hung out with them and did all this uh, Easter stuff. I have uh, four kids. I live in Kenya. So I do all the holidays all myself because there's not, it's not like, like there's no big Santa thing at Christmas. There's no Easter buddy thing at Easter. You kind of totally just do your own. So I do a color coded Easter egg hunt for my kids. So each kid has their own color of egg to look for to keep it fair because my kids are four, five, nine, and 11 years old. And my nine-year-old is particularly enthusiastic about Easter and candy in general. So color coding really helps. So they have their buckets and all that stuff. And then we also did a treasure hunt thanks to Clutterbug. She also has a, she's also a YouTuber. She does a bunch of decluttering uh, tutorials, which I totally enjoy. But anyway, she also had one and she linked this uh, Easter egg treasure hunt. And I was like, well, that's a good idea. Because, you know, I have other, like, I'm busy. Uh, printed, and the kids loved it. Loved it. There was like 18 or 19 clues. And I just kept them going from upstairs to downstairs, upstairs to downstairs, upstairs to downstairs. And it was really, it was actually really, really good. So I hope they forget all the clues by next year so we can do it again. <laughs> it was, it was really cute. Uh, she, she put the clues into the eggs, but I didn't want that getting mix, mixed up with the, hunt, with the Easter egg hunt, so I just put them in envelopes and stuck them, like small little envelopes, and hid them around the house. So totally good. I'll put the link in the description box below for that as well. So basically, long and short of that is I have not done much crochet. Uh, so I don't have much to show you for that which is shocking, right? I am working on the April Cal, which I am videoing so we can put it out I'm, uh, on this Friday, so in two days' time. I'm working on that. So that is my whip, but I'm not going to show you. It's right there. I still want to show you, but I'm not going to show you. But I'm going to, okay, maybe I'll show you if I break down later. 
So I just wanted to go over the questions I had from last week and from this week. And last week I was going to tell you uh, how I learned to crochet. So we're going to be doing that today. And I also will be giving some shout outs to other uh, podcasters and vlogs that I have been watching for a long time and some that I have just found. I had it tamed down to just one or two a week, but my list, it's just, I'm never gonna finish the list, like all the people that I really adore. So that is also going to be today. Putting my glasses on and pretending I can read a book, I can't, good Lord. So I also give a special shout out to five uh, viewers who have had the courage to introduce themselves in the past week. Uh, it doesn't mean that if I don't mention your name that I don't totally appreciate you, I totally do, but I just want to give an extra reward to people who have the courage to comment. Because even these, some of these people that I'll be mentioning today, I haven't had the courage to comment. So I understand that feeling and I appreciate you taking that step. It is so much easier to read a comment than it is to write a comment. So thank you for making it easier for me and I really appreciate it. Um, so the people I would like to say a special hello to are Penny and Julie and Becky and Tammy and Millie. So thank you so much. Thanks for introducing yourself. It's nice to get to know you and see what you're working on and hear about you a little bit. So thank you very much. If you'd like to introduce yourself, you could just do that in the comments box below and easy way to connect. We also have a Facebook group. We have two Facebook groups. One Facebook group is for just us, everybody. Uh, whatever you're working on, all your crochet stuff, it's crochet related. It's not like going into like glue guns and all the rest of it, but it is uh, crochet related. And we also have a Facebook group just for our crochet alongs. We have a crochet along uh, once a month for this year. We're trying to keep up to that shouldn't be too hard and by crochet along I mean I also do a tutorial for it so even if you're a new uh, crocheter you can still do uh, the crochet along with us because I'll be showing you step by step how to do it and if you don't know your basic steps I also have a basic crochet stitch series so you can like learn like the four stitches single double half double whatever you need to learn and then just join us with the cow so we have a Facebook group for that, basically with a new topic every month, and you can post your pictures of whatever cal you're working on that is from us. So it's not like, you know, different cals from other, um, other sources, but you're welcome to totally join that as well. I'll put the links for all that in the description box below. Back to my list. Okay, so I think, let me just check. Oh no, we're not there yet. I also would like to, or have been watching other people's uh, live streaming. Like, you know, or you, it's like a live video, so you can comment and I can talk back like that. Um, problem is when to do it, because I have viewers, or you are from, basically all over the world. So, and from YouTube, they're pretty great. You can print out or you can find out where your viewers are. So you know who you're talking to. You know your audience. And 56% of you are from United States. And the next one is 8%, 8.3 if you want to be tricky, is from United Kingdom. And then 5.3% is from Canada. And 2.4% is from Australia. And then Germany, 1.5, India, 1.5, Netherlands, 1.3, Sweden, 1%, France is like 0.7, blah, 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 it goes all the way down. Kenya, we have a big 0.6%. <laughs> Those are my friends and students, but thanks for watching. <laughs> so sweet. At least we made the list. We weren't on the list forever. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy we're on the list now. Um, so I want to include, obviously, North America for the U.S. and Canada and the United Kingdom. And then Australia would be great. Germany is kind of in there also, similar time zone to me, so that's easy. And India, they're a, bit, they're a different time zone. Netherlands, same as us, you know, in between the U.K. and here. Sweden, France, all that is. South Africa, same. So what I need to include, United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. 
That's what I, what I would like to include. Oh, it's a rough go. So I went to this where I always go actually is um, time and date. Anyway, if you do a Google search for international meeting planner, this pops up and I've used it for years because it shows you what time you can pick your cities and find out what time it is where you are compared to what time it is anywhere else you're looking for. And then you can kind of look on the computer. It's color coded, but my printer is still getting fixed. Actually, I think it's fixed. It has to get picked up and I haven't picked it up. Um, anyway, so mine's in black and white, but I highlighted when I can do it. So I have Nairobi and then uh, like California, Chicago, New York, London, Sydney, and Mumbai. And then what time of day I could do it where it's good for me. I try to just, because obviously I have four kids, I, that's my priority. So I try to fit crochet in around their schedule. But that is looking very rough. Uh, so if I woke up early in the morning, uh, at five o'clock, which is possible, I don't mind, I wake up early anyway. That would be seven o'clock in Sacramento, nine o'clock, or in, seven o'clock in California, nine o'clock in, in Chicago, 10 o'clock at night, the night before the Thursday night in New York, and then Sydney, it would be 12 o'clock on the Friday, and Mumbai would be 7.30 on the Friday. <sighs> but we miss out on London. London, it's three o'clock in the morning, or the UK, so that sucks. And it would, mean, it would also mean me waking up early on purpose and what if I just got back to sleep? You know what I mean? I mean, I could totally do it, I'm not complaining, but it's not ideal either. In the daytime, so from nine until three, my kids are at school, perfect time for me, total knockout for America and Canada. So that basically goes from 11 o'clock until seven o'clock, so 11 o'clock at night to seven in the morning is North American nighttime is my perfect daytime. So that Aww. is ridiculous also. So then I could also do, like trying to find a time that's okay for everybody. I could, I could also do the Friday night, like at six o'clock my time or seven o'clock my time. Seven o'clock's already dark, eee, but six o'clock I could do. I could do seven too, it wouldn't kill me. Because the kids would already like be happy that they're home and it's the weekend and it's usually pizza night. So. That would be, I'm sure that would be all right. I could swing that one. So that would be eight o'clock in California in the morning, Friday mornings, eight o'clock, or 10 o'clock in Chicago, 11 o'clock in New York, 4 p.m. in London, so that works out. We don't get Australia. Australia is one o'clock on Saturday morning, so that one sucks. And it would be 8.30 at night in Mumbai or in, in India. Anyway, working on that, let me know if you're interested in that and what time would be best for you that is daylight here, or almost daylight. On either side of daylight is still okay. So I thought that was interesting when thinking about doing that on Friday. Let me know what you think. Back down to here. So my Amazon, I think, is coming tomorrow. I don't know. They don't tell you it's coming until like it's in the van and they're like, can I deliver it? And you're like, ah, bring it. So hopefully that comes tomorrow. If it does, I'll unbox with you. Uh, so let's move on to how I learned to crochet. So I have a grandmother or had a grandmother. She passed a while back. Uh, who was a phenomenal crocheter. She crocheted blankets, afghans for everybody. All the time she was always crocheting. So she's like, m all my memories of her are her sitting on her armchair. I think it might have been, been like a small lazy boy or something. And she had those fold out aluminum TV trays. So she'd have a TV tray on each side of her. One with like her tea and her sweets and her, you know, bits and bites. And the other one had her crochet stuff on it, I think. Hard to remember, I mean, it was a long time ago. I was like eight when I moved away. So these are like childhood memories. But she was always sitting there crocheting and she'd have the TV on and she was like hooking away. And she always made like these, this was like her standard classic blanket. I'll show you from behind. So 
So they're this wide, I guess. And then, ooh, that long. So they were always made out of that crazy acrylic, like nothing fancy. What I want to call it like Fontrell or I don't know, it's Pentax, Pontax? I don't know, if you remember what that yarn's called, let me know in the comments below. So, and she put a tassel on every single end, which now obviously I understand why. And she'd even do it on the side that didn't need it. So that, uh, you know, you don't have to work in your ends. So that's probably why I'm not into tassels so much. <laughs> yes, battery died. Let me just take off this poncho. So my mother, she would teach us something every winter also. So although I don't remember learning the crochet specifically, I'm sure she taught me. Because my grand, I'm sure my grandmother, like, you know what I mean? I'm sure that that happened. But that all happened before I was eight. Um, then, I didn't do anything about it. You know, you grow up, you're a teenager, you do other things. Hi, Leah! <laughs> um, then I moved to Kenya when I was 30, I think. Maybe edging towards 31. And my first year, you know, you're busy, you're going on safari, you're checking this out, you're checking that out, like it's all amazing. And then the second year, I'm like, where's my Starbucks? Where's my, you know, um, my Joann's? It wasn't Joann's. What did we have in Fabricana? Where's the fabric store? I used to sew a lot. So, like, where's all my stuff? Like, I, you know, you start to feel trapped and, like, there's nothing to do. It's not like that anymore, but back then it sure was. So my husband being super sweet took me around for like two or three weeks to all these stores to buy me literally anything I wanted, like every single craft supply. Like we would go into the store and he would be like, do you want that, do you want this, do you want that? She'll take 12, she'll take 10. Like bought me literally everything, literally. I tried watercolor, I tried pastel painting. One of them is good, like it's framed in my house and nobody, like you wouldn't think that I did it, like it's good, but I don't know, I, it, like it was hard. Like I tried really hard to do it. It wasn't like, oh yeah, no, no, no. It wasn't easy. It wasn't natural. Like I put in a lot of effort. So those weren't really my things, but I do have really good supplies. Still, because I don't do it anymore. Um, I pay, so I stayed with the sewing. And I also did, um, I got some yarn and did crochet. So I, he took me to the bookstore, or one of the bookstores, and I got this book, which was the only book they had on crochet good enough, give it a try. I knew I didn't want to do knitting. Oh no, I did knitting also. Oh, I didn't bring that here. I knit this fabulous blanket. I'll go and get it. So this is the blanket that I knit. I bought the yarn and made it in 2004. Last time I was in Canada. Can you imagine that? It's all alpaca and um, cashmere and like every fancy yarn. There's some Italian ribbon in there. All sorts of fabulousness. The lady in the store was nice enough to tell me what to do so that it would look great going both ways. I think it was knit one, purl one, to be honest. And then uh, just tie the ends so I didn't have to weave them in. That was so nice of her. So I made this for my husband, which is great. So I did this, and it was really kind of like, I mean, I liked it, but it was like a bit slow and a bit like slow. So then I got this book, my crochet school book. And I was like, let me just uh, go through and try crochet. Because the dropping stitches, I use circular needles, but dropping stitches kind of stressed me out. Like I was worried about it. I mean, I didn't drop a stitch, but um, it still stressed me out. So I'm like, maybe with a hook, I won't be stressed out. So let me get you that blanket that I made. And it, it's not as pretty. Okay, 
So, this one, this was, this is just made out of like, with Kenyan yarn, regular. It's not even chunky. It's like, I guess it's like a DK or something. Oh, I'm not a fan of me blanket, but, and I made it super wide. It was going to be like across the bed and then, so from the foot of the bed, working up to the pillows. And it ended up being that wide. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> so it's basically, you just kind of drape it on the back of your sofa. And I did kind of have sofas that this matched at one point in time. Now they're so sun bleached that they're kind of gray. This looks like purple on top of it. But anyway, no longer matches my sofa. It was also obviously a long time ago, 2004, 2005. And I just kind of changed stitches whenever I felt like it practice a new stitch and this is that blanket I made with a four millimeter yikes so then I was like oh I mean you know you can crochet so that wasn't really a, a worry about it and I enjoyed this book a lot because it has lots of pictures and they're numbered so you're like okay first do this then do that da, da, da. how to do buttonholes it has everything in there really like holding your hook D, 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 D. basic stitches and then like techniques edgings I mean you know it's a pretty good um, book and I think I like just the name of it because it's kind of a bit serious like crochet school it's like okay I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna learn I'm gonna do it so I, I enjoyed this book a lot plus it's hardcover and I love hardcover books also so that is pretty much how I learned to crochet then in uh, two years ago I guess Yep, two years ago, almost two years ago, two years and a couple months, um, I started this crochet initiative here in Nairobi to help single mothers, blah, blah, blah. And that blossomed into teaching crochet classes and now a urinary and you. So now I crochet a lot. I crochet like every day unless there's something weird. Like on Easter, I might not have crocheted. I think it was a Saturday before. Maybe Easter I crocheted, Easter Sunday. But the Saturday I didn't because I was like so busy trying to like pull Easter out of my butt, as I do. Nailed it. But exhausting, so tired. Um, so those are me blankies. Drop those down. I have some mystery packages ready to go out this week. Quite a few of them. Or next week try to block the addresses so I don't have to edit them out like I did last time. So I think there's five ready to go. Plus, our lucky Miss Rachel, she gets her April giveaway. That's exciting. Conveniently stuffed into an old Amazon box. Can't even, like, there's no movement in there. It is solid. So that is going out this week, and I managed to posty note the address. Clever. So looking forward to that. Going out. I have some more collecting to do for Miss Zelda, but I have to go and find it. I know I've seen it a few years ago, but I want to get her, and got to go and dig that up. So hers is not ready to go yet. Now let me check my list. Glasses? Yes, okay. So then as I was doing my crochet, learning my crochet, and then teaching the, um, my ladies how to crochet, I needed some projects. I needed to know like what, like how do you teach somebody? What do you do? What project is good? Blah, blah, blah. So then I started, then I found YouTube, thankfully. Thankfully, where was YouTube like in 2004? No idea. I mean, plus we didn't even really have good internet then. It was so old. But now YouTube, so great. So who I started learning from was Claire at Bob Wilson 123. She has been doing crochet tutorials and free, like free tutorials and free patterns online for, I want to say 10 years. It's probably like eight years like for a long time. So she has a lot of videos, a lot of projects, sweaters, 
hats, bags, um, like everything is over there. Kid sized things, adult sized things, stitches, blankets. So whatever I was thinking of doing, I would try to find, like I try to learn it from her and then take that and then teach my ladies how to do it. So that was really good. So I, I have, I'm going to link all of these podcasts or vlogs or crochet tutorial people in the description box below. I'll just blast it across the screen so you can at least uh, see with your eyes what I'm saying because I talk too fast or my birds are too loud. But everything will be in the description box below. So I started with Claire. Oh, my glasses. And then um, that's how I did my learning, like of teaching and some simple projects. And she's like my coach. She doesn't know she's my coach, but she's like my coach. Then about six months ago, I was looking on YouTube and Crochet Luna popped up. And I was like, what's that? Like, it has crochet in it, so I mean, that's really good. And I met Claudia. And I think it was her first podcast, which I had never heard of. I mean, I've heard of podcasts, but not um, crochet videos about crochet. So that was really great. And she said something like, there should be more crochet uh, podcasts out there. And if you're thinking about doing it, do it, because everybody is so nice and the community is so welcoming. And I was like, what? Number one, sounds impossible. Number two, sounds crazy. Number three, who's ever gonna watch a podcast? Like, I don't know, the whole thing just sounds so crazy. But it stuck with me. And then I was like, are other people doing it? Like, who are these, who, like, who is she talking about? So then I looked for that on YouTube. And then I found uh, Rosina from uh, Zines and Rogers, who apparently is already a mecca in the crochet world. Uh, her patterns are everywhere and she's fabulous. I watched her first one and I really enjoyed it. Because she was just, she's just very like um, real about it, you know, like, uh, you know, worrying if she's doing it okay and, you know, how everything is set up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that'd be me. I'd be like, so like, ah, am I doing it okay? So uh, I really like that. And. And those were my first two. Those, those two ladies gave me the inspiration and unknown encouragement to start my own podcast. Like when I started thinking about it, I'm like, okay, well, they, they can do it. So I guess I could try it. And I'm so glad I did because it's such an easy way to meet you. You know, but you can't really comment on a tutorial and get to know somebody. There's not enough topic, you know, like, oh, I liked how you sewed in your ends like that's not a good conversation starter so the podcasts are really good for that and without have without starting this our whole community wouldn't be there so i have those two ladies to thank so thank you so much uh then now what podcast i'm watching and enjoy some are some you're gonna just know because everybody like i feel everybody knows them but in case you haven't uh, found them and some are small that maybe you don't know about yet. So Nicole from The Pine Cottage, she does great uh, photography and great um, podcasts, crochet stuff. She is starting out with her with the podcast and I really enjoy it. It's like beautiful to watch. She's a minimalist, so she doesn't have like all this craziness all around her it's like it would be like i'd like to think it'd be me if i ever grew up like you know like choo, like very zen so beautiful to watch love her stuff another one i'm super enjoying is hand me downs crochet so that's jared at hand me down oh hand me downs crochet and knit he's in the uk uh very interesting gentleman uh like he's fascinating and his last one he just put up like last night I think he was like he's on holiday and he's like showing you around and I'm like oh I love it like he's like oh he's in Scars Scarsborough or something but uh, he's like oh there's like trolley cars and like this is here and that's over there and it's absolutely fascinating so I'm like stuck on that like a like a like I'm stuck on it so go check him out another one who's super adorable like the cutest thing you'll ever see is French fried crochet. 
Uh, her name's Olive. I think I had to like. She doesn't say it in her videos. I had to like find it. I think it's on her website that she says her, that she introduces herself. So she is super cute. She looks like she's about eight years old. She's not. She's like a woman, but she is adorable. Like she's so adorable. So go check her out also. And then obviously, I think everybody knows Hannah from the Cozy Cottage. But if you haven't, go check her out. She, I want to say Florida. I really shouldn't quote things I don't know. But she has lots of great crochet stuff. She's always doing something amazing and uh, she's super sweet. And I don't comment either, so hi Hannah. I'm the one who doesn't comment. Love you. Um, then there's Holly from Yarn Journey Crochet. Been watching her for ages. Have managed to comment. Hi Holly. Uh, she's great. She has a bunch of kids. Uh, she crochets, she's got a new camera now, so her podcasts are looking like super fly. She is super, uh, very entertaining. I really enjoy watching her. Then there is Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter. And she really calls it cro Crotcheter. I think it is how, what her husband calls it. So now that is the name. I thought she was like saying it wrong or I was like just hearing it wrong. But no, in one of her podcasts, she does explain that that is how you say it because that's how her husband says it and that is the name. So she is Debbie from Canadian Cro Crotcheter, <laughs> spelled like crochet. Anyway, really great. I enjoy her also. She's just starting out. She only, she's just been doing it for a few weeks, I think. So, um, but very interesting and super, super sweet lady. Then there's Sanja. I'm probably saying that wrong, sorry. From Hickety Pickety Funked Up Art. So she does a little bit of crochet, but mostly does other things uh, in uh, like mixed media. So if you are one of those mixed media people interested in other stuff, or you just wanna check her out, also go and check her out. She has an amazing setup of like art supplies. It's like she lives in an art studio. Pretty cool to go and see. Uh, I think those are my make sure doo, 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 doo. yes those are my podcasts that I just wanted to get caught up on and let you know about and now moving on to our question and answer from the previous podcast so if you have any questions about living in Kenya or Kenya or my crochet or any questions that you want to ask me leave them in the comments below and then next week next Wednesday I will answer them basically so my questions from last week, and they're not in any order other than chronological, I try to keep my book with me as I'm going through the comments and then just write it down. So if it's zigzagging, forgive me. Uh, first question is, would I move back to North America? Yes, I would. Originally, we were gonna be moving to the Chicago area, uh, but I have a mixed family. We're all a different shade and we're all a different ethnicity, I suppose. So now I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, hesitant to move back because I, I grew up in Canada. Uh, I know how my teen years were. Hi, Leah. I know, right? So like, if I could like step over all of those uh, cool choices for my kids, I would like to do that. So I would like to raise them here if I could or a place with a similar culture as here, like old-fashioned, old-fashioned culture because Kenya, it, it, it's about 50 years behind. So it's kind of, it's not like the 50s, but maybe it's like, you know, it feels like that. Okay, next question, glasses back on. Uh, have my kids visited North America? My son did. We were, I took him, he was two years old. I took him to the Chicago area for a play date. Hi, AR! Which is where I met AR, because her, her um, children go to the same school I wanted my son to go to. Okay, no idea what I was talking about. Kids, kids are home, kids are home. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, my kids visited. Oh yes, so my daughter and my two younger ones have not left Kenya. Uh, they are adopted. So there's a, like it takes two to three years for to start and complete an adoption. And in between that time, you do not have a passport for your child. So can't travel. And then there was windows where I could have traveled and I was like, ah, we'll just go next time or we'll go when the weather's better. And then I adopted another kid. So whoop. we've traveled around to Kenya a lot, 
but no, they have not left. So do my kids have Kenyan or Canadian citizenships or passports? Yes, they have both. So that's really great about being Canadian. Um, thank you, Canadian government. Because how cool is that? It's rough to travel on a Kenyan passport. You have to get a visa. People don't want you in the country. They think you're going to like never leave. You're going to be like a refugee or something. So um, getting visas is a pain in the butt. So they don't have to. They're Canadian. Did I teach my daughter to crochet? Yes, I did. I also taught my son, so my two older kids know how to crochet. My younger two, I think, are a bit young still, four and five years old. Uh, but they really want to learn. But I think that just might be too young. I think maybe next year I'll teach them, or in the summer, maybe summer holidays this year. But I taught my son and my daughter to crochet. My son got the stitches down, so he did the single, the half double, and the double crochet. And then I figured as long as you know how to crochet, you don't have to crochet, but you should know how. So he knows how, and then he chose not to do it. And my daughter knows how, and she chose to do it. Although now she's a bit like rebelling against the crochet, which is fine. But she can do it. She's really good. Uh, 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 uh. Is there an animal reserve or zoo, and do I take the kids? We do not have a zoo, which is good. We have, uh, obviously, real safaris with the big five. Um, kids love those ones. And in Nairobi, there is also Giraffe Center. Giraffe Center is awesome. You can go and feed giraffe. There's like a, well, you can probably see, I'll find a picture. But you can feed the giraffe, like it's kind of like kibble, like dog food bits. Um, and they'll even like lick it, like the, if you put it in your lips, they'll like come and like, blah, 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 like get it out with their tongue. I, I can't do it, but my kids can do it. <laughs> so I'm just, the, I'm, yeah, I just put, oh yeah, of course you can do it. I would never do it. But they do. Love going there. Uh, that one is like super great. I go if I live nearby. I would almost go every day. It's great. Like that is super super great. We also have um, animal orphanage. I've only been there I think twice. They have all the animals. I guess it's as close to a zoo as you would have. Um, and it's really cool. They have like a walkway going through, and it's all quite natural. Um, and it's really cool. It's a far. It's on the other side of town. Like, pat, like through town and on the other side of town, so it's, it's pretty far away. But um, next time I take the kids there, I'll take you also. Oh, there's also Sheldrick's, the elephant one. Also a really good thing, you can adopt an elephant and stuff. And if I go, I'll also take you. So I think that's it for my questions. Yeah, so this week, what am I up to? Kids are home, obviously. I am working on the crochet along for our cozy boho cardi. That's coming along. I just have to film a couple more bits because it's obviously a great big granny square. Okay, let me show you, right? Okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, my hook's still in it. There we go. So it's a great big solid granny square, but I don't know if you've done a solid granny square before, or you do them all the time, but I have a hard time, like I, I can't keep doing the same increase in every corner because my shape gets like all weird, like there's, it kind of looks like a flattened starfish or something, like it's just, there's too many stitches in the corner. So I'm figuring out the formula of like how often you have to do just one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet for the corners opposed to two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And I'm just doing the chain one because I don't want big holes. It's going to be my winter jacket. So I don't want a, like the smallest holes in the corner. I'm totally fine with that. And I want it to lay flat. I don't want it to be wobbly. I've been looking, uh, I've looked on YouTube, I've looked around for like even photos of like large granny squares and they're all kind of like over the sofa they're all kind of like rumpled up like I haven't seen a flat one truth be told that's like doesn't have extra stitches somewhere so that's what I'm working on and I just have to film like I want to film the corner when it, you have to stop doing an increase or like you know just do the small corner or and what it looks like when you have to do the big corner so I have to do that before I put out the part one. 
So hopefully that'll be today. But cute, right? Do you like the colors? For a while, I thought the blue was too much, like this light blue. It looked good in it looked good in my you know in the basket. But when I started crocheting it, that that just turned into like a bright blue, and I was like, oh no, it's bright blue. But now I like it again. I like it again. So I'm working on that a little bit, filming that a little bit, and. We have our giveaway for March. Fabulous, all those really great yarns that go with that bracelet I showed you last time. So that is going on. I think there's about 800 entrants already, or entries. So please go to that video and put a comment in the comment box below uh, answering the question of the video so that you can have a chance to enter that too because the whole reason I do these giveaways is for you. It's for my actual subscribers, my actual friends out there who come back and watch and spend time with me. I want to give something to you. So that is what those giveaways are for and I want it to go to somebody who is one of us. So please go and enter. And I think that's it. So whatever you're working on, leave it in the comments below. Love to see what you're up to. Join the Facebook groups. So you can post your pictures over there. And I don't really have any like super great witty question to ask you this week. I'm even looking around and I don't know what it is. Oh, I know. It's for this our live streaming what time would be good for you to do live streaming or to join in so i can have a chat with you too uh it's looking like friday night sorry australia um it's looking like friday night so either 8 a.m or 9 a.m pacific standard time let me know i'll i'll link i'll put this in the comment box below like in the description box so you can just like to see the times that you, are, we have, you have an option of. If I could figure out how to do a poll, that would be so good. Oh, maybe I'll do a poll on our Facebook group. That'll be good. So I'll put a poll on the Facebook group of what time would work for you. I'll put Pacific Standard Time because that I know that better because I, you know, I lived in Vancouver forever. So that makes that's easy for my head. Um, and let's get a time set up where we can hang out and talk. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be so fun. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any suggestions, comment box below. <laughs> Stay hooked. Oh, forgot to tell you about the Kenyan clip of the week. So at my house, the windows are tinted. So outside it looks like a mirror and inside you don't get the the UV light, I guess it blocks the UV light. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's mirrored from the outside. So, and we're kind of at the, we're in, you know, Nairobi, but I back on to like a 20 acre piece of land, which is lovely. Uh, so there's lots of wildlife and there's birds tapping on the windows a lot of the time, which is normally to say like this, like tap, 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 tap. And you're like, oh, cute, that's a bird. So this one day it is like, lots of taps. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I open the curtain and there is about, well, you'll see here or there or after this, there is like so many birds hanging out on my window. <laughs> like so many. It was, it was like almost Alfred Hitchcock. So anyway, I filmed that for you. That is coming up next. Bye.